Good morning or afternoon whenever you happen to be watching this. It's Work From Home Monday and I just got done grading your discussion boards and your homework and we struggled a little bit with proof by induction. Now I know I have a lot of examples of proof by induction in my lecture videos but I'm going to go through another one and this one's actually a little bit harder uh, than what we're used to but it's a good way to show you exactly how to prove something by induction and what I am looking for as your instructor. So First, we're going to start with the question. The question says prove 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus so forth is equal to 2n squared minus n. Now, as the proof writer, I'm going to assume that my reader is never going to see what I have written in green there. And therefore, that's why my first statement is let p of n be the statement that, and then I restate what it is that I'm trying to prove. That's step one. Step two is the basis step, and yes, you should write basis step. That way I can follow your work. Okay, this is what I'm trying to prove. I'm going to start at the first value of my domain, which we can see is going to be one, given that that's the first value. Um, from here, don't say the left-hand side of our equation shows this and the right-hand side shows this. This is a mathematical equation, show it as such. So I'm going to take my equation, which says either one, or I used 4n minus 3 because we can see that that's the expression that we're using to find each subsequent value, um, is equal to 2n squared minus n, and I've replaced n with 1 on both sides, and I found 1 is equal to 1. So notice I'm not saying left-hand side and then equal 1, and then right-hand side and equal 1. Um, don't do it that way because it can get a little bit harder for the reader to put together exactly what you're doing. Keep it in an equation. That's why equations are great. Step three is the inductive step, which has three parts, right? The first part is the inductive hypothesis, which is um, basically P of K. So inductive hypothesis, or maybe we'll call that 3A. The inductive hypothesis is restating exactly what you have for P of K, I'm sorry, for P of N in your proof and replacing it with some arbitrary integer value. So I'm using K, there's no magic to using K, you can use a different letter. Um, K is just easy to use. So I'm going to write inductive hypothesis. I'm assuming that this expression is true for some integer value of K. I'm assuming that it's true because that's the inductive hypothesis. What I'm trying to prove is that the next value in the sequence. So notice all of this is the same. And then I'm going to add the next value in the sequence. Well, according to the rule, the next value in the sequence is found by four times K plus three, but I'm finding it for, sorry about that, P of K plus one. Now this is where most people most students had trouble. They got down to one, two, three, A, breeze. Starting at three B, we had issues. So three B, the whole purpose of the what to prove statement is so that when I get to the end of my proof and my final statement looks exactly like this, I can say, yay, I did it. This is what I was trying to prove. I just proved that's true. Therefore, I've proved the statement by mathematical induction, okay? This is an important step. If you're skipping over the step, which many of you are doing or doing it incorrectly, you're not going to end up with a valid mathematical proof. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the next value in my sequence, which would be four, and then remember it's the next value, so not k, but k plus one minus three, and that's what I have here. And what I'm trying to prove, and this is what some people are doing, some people are saying, I'm trying to prove that this, plus four times k plus one minus three is equal. Well, of course that's equal. You don't have to prove that. If you're adding the same thing to each side, of course it's equal because we're assuming that the original equation is true. For the what to prove statement, you are taking the right-hand side of that equation and replacing each k with k plus one. And that's what I've done here. So this is what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that if I add four times the quantity of k plus one minus three to the left-hand side, it's going to result in the right-hand side where I have um, each value of k increased by one. 
Now, from here, hopefully you've followed to this point. Uh, as I said when I started the video, this one is a little bit harder than what we're used to. So from here, I kind of have a choice to make. Um, I can start the proof, which is 3C. Or because this one's a little more complicated, as we can see, this 4 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 3, I could rewrite that as 4k plus 4 minus 3 or 4k plus 1. That part doesn't really bother me, but the right-hand side's kind of a mess. So at this point, I choose either to simplify on the right-hand side before I start my proof or start my proof and then simplify uh, my result to make it look just like that. So I'm going to show you both ways. So buckle up, we're in for a long ride. Okay, if I'm gonna do it the normal way, um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll just leave this space up here. So this is going to be 3C the other way. This is going to be 3C using exactly what I have. So typically what I would do is, let me just try to get rid of some of this space. Okay, typically what I would do is go th straight to 3C and say, okay, I'm going to begin with my inductive hypothesis. So this is the proof, which is 3C. So inductive hypothesis, what to prove, now I'm starting my proof. Notice that I've started with the inductive hypothesis written in blue, which is what I know to be true. And now I'm going to add the exact same thing, exact same thing to each side. So some of you were struggling with the what to prove and the proof and which one is which and, and when to show the same thing on each side and when to show different things on each side. When you begin your proof, mathematically, we have to say we're adding the same thing to each side. And therefore, because the inductive hypothesis was true, then the result is true. So notice on the left-hand side, I have 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus blah, 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 plus 4K minus 3 plus 4K plus 1 minus 3, which is exactly what I wanted. I think I have an extra parenthesis there, um, is equal to, and now the right-hand side is kind of a mess, okay? So let's just do some algebra on the right-hand side. I've got 2k squared minus k plus 4k plus 4 minus 3. I don't have to keep writing the left-hand side. Why? Because the left-hand side looks exactly like my what to prove statement. That's why I can stop writing it. So now I've got 2k squared and then minus k plus 4k, that's a total of 3k and then plus four minus three, so that's plus one. Now, you might be saying, great, that doesn't look at all like what I'm trying to prove, and you're right. This is why on this particular question, it might be easier to manipulate the what to prove statement, but let's go ahead and do it because we're smart and we can do it. Keep in mind, this is what I'm trying to get to. So I'm going to say let two, and then I'm going to use the k squared value. Okay, so I still have, I've just used the 2k squared, and I'm still going to have plus 3k plus 1 out here somewhere. Okay, because what I have to do is complete the square. So again, this is a more difficult question. Uh, to complete the square, I need k plus 1 quantity squared inside the parentheses, which is k squared plus 2k plus 1. Now, if I added, this was already a term, 2k squared. If I had 2k squared, now I've added a 4k out of nowhere, I've conjured it, and a plus 2. So notice, oops, I have to now subtract those on the outside so that the math works out. Now, why do I do that? Because now I've got 2 times the quantity of k plus 1 quantity squared. And that's what I want. But I also want minus k minus minus k plus 1. So let's see what I have when I combine like terms. I get minus k and I get 
minus 1. So I can rewrite that as 2 times the quantity of k plus 1, quantity squared, minus the quantity k plus 1, because now that minus would be distributed to both terms. And now I've done what I set out to do. Because my statement, my proof statement, looks exactly like my what to prove statement. Okay, so that's the way I would normally do it. Now, that's a little bit of extra math because we had to complete the square. And so if you're like, well, that sucked. I get it. Uh, let's insert some space here and show the alternative. So the alternative is instead of going straight to the proof, we can continue um, the what to prove statement. So 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus blah, blah, plus 4k minus 3 plus 4 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 3. And then I would just kind of go in reverse. So now I'm going to say, let's clean up the right side because I don't want to have to complete the square to show that this is true. This gives me 2 times the quantity of k squared plus 2k plus 1 minus k minus 1. And this gives me 2k squared plus 4k plus 2, oops, and then minus k minus 1. And then 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. So by manipulating doing that work ahead of time, my what to prove statement is now that I end up with by adding uh, 4 times the quantity of k plus 1 quantity squared minus 3, by adding that to both sides, I'm going to end up with this on the right side. So now the proof would still start with the inductive hypothesis, which is 1 plus 5 plus 9. So I'm using this step dot 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 plus 4k minus 3. Um, and then I'm going to leave some space and I usually write it in another color so we can see exactly what's happening is equal to 2k squared minus k. And then on each side, I'm going to add 4 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 3. Again, we know this is true because we're adding the same thing to each side of the equation. Now on the left hand side, I have exactly what I want. I have everything exactly as it is on my what to prove statement. 4k minus 3 plus 4 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 3. And on the right hand side, the math is going to go a lot faster because I have 2k squared minus k and I have plus 4k plus 4 minus 3. That gives me 2k squared plus 3k plus 1, and now I'm done. So it's really the same amount of work either way. This one made it a little bit easier because I didn't have to kind of go in reverse and complete the square. But notice either way, I did the same process. Start with the inductive hypothesis, add the exact same thing to each side, manipulate it till it looks exactly like the what to prove statement. If you're struggling with any of this, please set up a one on one with me. I'm super busy this week because my kids are home Thursday, Friday, uh, and I've actually got a sick kid home today. Um, but just reach out and I'll do the best I can to help you.